So from APnews.com, U.S. retail sales plunged a record 16% in April as virus hit. And super sales, as we see in the graphic here in the story, all New York and company, no exclusion, 50% off everything. U.S. retail sales tumbled by a record 16.4% from March to April as business shutdowns caused by the coronavirus kept shoppers away, threatened the viability of stores across the country, and further weighed down a sinking economy. Now, I'm actually surprised that it's only that low. The Commerce Department's report Friday on retail purchases showed a sector that has collapsed so fast that sales over the past 12 months are down a crippling 21.6%. So this is still the bulk of the drop was March to April, 16.4 out of 21.6%. The severity of the decline is unrivaled for retail figures that date back to 92. The monthly decline in April nearly doubled the previous record drop of 8.3% set just one month earlier. So this was definitely the worst month so far. You know, that, that, so what, what I guess a lot of this is food and necessities that people are still going out. That's the bulk of what people spend money on in retail. But the implications of this are huge and in some ways a good thing. Like I'm a big fan of shopping online. Like you shouldn't shop for anything in person that you can get on, which is an inefficiency. Like there's some things like clothing, some of it, you want to try it on first. Um, you know, produce, maybe you want to, you want to inspect it. You want to see it. You want to, well, you have some personal preference. You can't just, you know, you, okay, sure. You know, even then though, I think you should, you should be making your own food, you know, but whatever you, if, if we can get drone delivery and, and, and you can have your preferences for produce standardized in some way. I want five avocados at 80% firmness, you know, like you can, you can do that. Um, with drone delivery, you'll be able to have better, precision eventually in even delivery among those those little things with with precision and for even clothing you're going to be able to return stuff so easily that you know going to a store seeing it in person trying it on is going to become uh, a, a sort of rare luxury a side thing you know hey i bought these pants from amazon this was the waist size this was the brand they wear out i can buy them again i don't know i'm gonna go try them on in the store right T-shirts. Why would you ever go to a store? You know, you know your your standard T-shirt size. You know why why would you ever go into a store to try on a T-shirt? So, retail sales plunge in April, going down to the chart here. If we could for a second here, CJ scrolling down in the story. Uh, preliminary data from the Census Bureau shows overall sales falling more than 16% in April as the coronavirus outbreak upends u.s consumer spending the biggest drop here and this is this is great to see where this is coming from clothing and retail accessory stores down 78.8 percent 80 percent and and this is you know a, a forced upgrade really i think from the way we were doing things before it's unfortunate that that, that, that this change is happening by force in many ways and abruptly uh that 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 is wrong and there's a lot of suffering that is associated with this that is totally unnecessary but this is a positive shift should people be buying clothes in person this much no so the economy is getting more efficient what does that mean more goods and services going to meet actual human needs this is more money for charity this is more money for people who can afford life-saving surgeries, who can provide for people in need. All of these things across the board are going to get better because now less resources are going to driving back and forth from points of retail to buy clothing. And, and some people like that experience. They enjoy that. you know. And for people who want that, still more power to them. Looks like the people who enjoy that experience enough to face coronaphobia only amount to about 20% of the clothing and clothing accessory customer base so back to the chart please electronics and appliance stores down 60 percent. that's great you know electronics very rarely do you need to see them in person before buying them for people getting better and it's a basic skill you know that, that i take some pride in 
that I have, I'm a good online shopper. I know how to look at things and not be surprised and disappointed when they arrive. Oh, the picture made it look a lot bigger than that. You know, that happens. But as people remember, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I need, this is a photograph. I can't assume the size of something. I need to look at the dimensions before I, I buy something. Just looking at descriptions, looking at competition and actually driving commerce online increases efficiency in so many other ways because it diminishes the capability of retail business to engage in a sort of uh, locational physical advantage price gouging, right? If, if I'm a brick and mortar clothing store, and I'm the only one in town, I can charge you for the premium of me keeping this shop open and you're paying me to do that. If I'm paying, uh, if I'm if I'm selling the same goods online, now I'm competing with everybody in the world who can list those same services and can undercut me. And so it's forcing retail efficiency to to skyrocket because the internet has has already done that, but now it's like boom, next level stuff as people are forced to do this. So the next point: furniture and home furnishing stores, fifty-eight point seven percent. Sporting goods slash hobby slash musical instruments slash bookstores down 38%. Sporting goods, I suppose, are one of those things, you know, you, you might have some justification of, you know, wanting to get your hands on a baseball bat, you know, for Little League or your softball league to, to see how it feels in your hands or a or, or baseball mitt. But even then, you know, and of course, if you're willing to go play sports, you're probably willing to go to a store to buy some stuff. Uh, if you're playing sports with other people, restaurants and bars, you know, I guess this went down you know, more in March, but that's down 30% again, still going down. Gas stations, and this is a big one, and this is a measure of the overall efficiency that's coming for this. Uh, gasoline stations down 28.8%, miscellaneous retailers down 24.7%, general merchandise down 20 uh, health and personal care stores down 15 And that's great. You know, a lot of these things, easy Amazon purchases or, or other online ways of doing this uh grocery stores now this is interesting because grocery stores in the month before were up 12 percent. if you're looking at the chart down at the bottom those blue bars off to the right grocery stores now down so there was a hoarding effect and one of the things that we saw from the statistics from apple was that there was a surge in grocery store traffic around the shutdown which makes a lot of sense and it was mostly people hoarding necessary supplies motor vehicles and other parts dealers so this is interesting. That's making a comeback, as we would as, as we would predict. Down 33% people putting off vehicle repairs. People not going to you know O'Reilly, AutoZone, Napa, going out to get basic auto parts for repairs or improvements that they can put off. Now we see that that decline slowing this month, only down 12 and a half percent. So that's good. People are going back to making you know home car repairs and and, and doing things like that. Um, building material slash garden supply. Although I would suspect, by the way, and this is probably a good thing, people generally should buy less new cars. That's an inefficiency. So much fucked up tied around the, the new car market with financing and ripoffs. And you know, new car dealers, really, as businesses, they are not car dealerships. They're financing businesses. They are using cars as a way to make money from financing and maintenance and upcharges and other ways of ripping you off and taking advantage of you. So if that's gone down and the luxury of buying new cars is somewhat dampened and people are still doing their, you know, home oil changes. And, you know, that's it. like, why would you want some strange dude at Jiffy Lube? And I, I like Jiffy Lube. I'm not playing the fear mongers devil advocate here it. in that sense. That like, you know, if you're trying to be sterile, why would you have someone else go in your car? And they wear gloves. And I'm sure they're all, I'm sure at, at any point. You know, Pet Boys and AutoZone or, or um, you know, uh, Jiffy Loop type, you know, uh, convenience oriented auto service. They're wearing masks and they, they all wear rubber gloves anyways as mechanics. But why would you want that guy in your car when you could just, you know, do it at home? So if anything, you know, that's that's a, a better shift towards efficiency in general. Of course, we you know, if it wasn't for the inefficiency of government, we all, we'd all have self-flying cars by now that would repair themselves automatically, right? Because they would... Oh, something's wrong, and they fly themselves to a repair shop right. and get fixed and fly and fly back to you, right? Yeah, exactly, right. They just swap them out. So, and, and by the way, what 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 might come in that reality is more of a uh, you know loaner rather than ownership based systems. We're already seeing the shift to in a lot of urban centers where people aren't 
And I'm gonna guess people living that close together. But what, since they do, and some people like that, you know, to, to have people owning cars when they could be sharing cars, and just that there, there are so many little gov- little little businesses fighting government on this petty thing. The ability, like zip cars, great innovation that you don't have to own. You can rent a car to do when you need to get out of the city. If all of your in the city stuff now. There are problems with this security wise. I would want my own bug out vehicle if I had to live in a city. But hey, if you're not in that realm, hey, rent rent and be more efficient. Yeah, and yeah. while this is a real terrific and leap forward in efficiency, I think it is really important that we stay attuned to the the, the suffering around us as we are all being isolated that we remember those around us going into isolation who might not be doing so under as good terms as we are the last part of the story your credit card purchases tracked by jp morgan chase found that spending on such necessities as groceries fuel phone service and auto repair declined 20 percent on a year-over-year basis so 20% 20% in essentials down, you know, people putting off cell phone bills and, and auto repairs and tightening their belts when it comes to fuel and groceries, of course. But by contrast, spending on non-essentials, such as meals out, airfare, and personal services like salons or yoga classes plummeted by a much worse 50%. So I am looking forward to getting back on the road and supporting yoga teachers with my patronage and and paying for classes that way um for people who whatever you want this is a critical time whatever you want to see in in in-person services vote with your dollars as we come out of these shutdowns i like i like yoga in person i've done yoga online i've been watching videos i've done yoga by myself i really do value the and it's i I won't lie about the eye candy benefit but i really do enjoy doing and i've been in all dude classes for yoga like it's it's a great experience regardless but i i do value the in-person yoga experience so i am going to be making an, a deliberate effort to go and patronize those businesses as they open up here in arizona um in in flagstaff and in prescott there are yoga studios that i've been to there's some great ones there um some some great hot yogas and uh for uh, you know restaurants that you want to see open local restaurants please go back um specifically i'll give a shout out to insurgent brewing in chino valley it's been a while since i've seen my friend rob there but if you're in chino valley um he's at least partially open for business already so certainly insurgent brewing and their logo is the rebel oh, man. uh insignia from star wars or they sort of take off all that with hops like from beer in the in the logo so yeah i could go use a beer um you know our crew's going down to phoenix unfortunately without me since i have so many online engagements coming up this weekend but they're going in into phoenix on saturday maybe on the way in and out we can pick up a couple growlers from insurgent brewing i think those would be appreciated by everybody here at the garden especially the king the king likes his beer 